Okay, am I recording? Suppose I want to wish everybody a happy World Passport Password Day, not Passport Day. Uh, if you forget your passwords, that kind of really sucks, doesn't it? So, hmm. Here's what we're going to do on this video. I'm going to uh, make a finish, kind of work on our uh, project finance for a while. And uh, what was this? Oh, this was something else I was doing. But what I'm going to do today is work on the um, debt service reserve account, okay? And we put our assumptions in here, and I hope we put our assumptions in a relatively logical order, and I hope these assumptions, are the blue ones are the inputs, and then we, I don't know why I made some calculations, I had my sum column. Now, Let's first discuss the 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 how how to set up the assumptions for the DSRA, and then talk to you about some of the horrible problems. I love to I always leave the DSRA to last, and I love to forget about it, and it creates messy circular reference problems. And if you do it carefully, it's like oh, this little kind of thing is such a pain. And, but it can actually uh, cause some real, other than the circular pro reference problem, depending on the length of it and depending on how you finance it, it creates some really tricky and interesting problems. The big one, which I'll come back to again and again and again and again, is let's think about this. If your debt is sized, two ways to size the debt, DSCR, debt to capital. If your debt is sized by debt to capital, well, DSRA is funded 80% from equity, 20% from, 80% from debt, 20% from equity, because it's part of the uses of funds in that case, if that's the, the thing that drives the debt financing. If the debt is sized by the DSCR, the debt is the debt is driven, the debt size is driven by the cash flow. The DSRA does not come into play, which means if you can get a DSRA, this is complicated, if you can get a DSRA that's funded uh, 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 with a, a, a LC, you don't have to put that money up, up for it. If you get, if you fund it with cash, that's horrible because that cash comes from equity and not debt. Maybe you don't believe me, and at the very end of this movie <laughs> video, I'll try to prove it. So let's start with the DSRA months. The DSRA. Uh, that's just the first part. Okay. The next. So we're going to put how many months, and we're going to make this flexible, and then. Whew, Let's put the the uh, whether the DSRA DSRA I don't want to say funded uh, uh, I'll say LC used for for DSRA we still have to compute the D, the DSRA if it's <laughs> Oh my God! And I ha I have not been drinking. Uh, if if it's gonna be fun not funded, if the DSRA is gonna uh, come from another whatever good bank, for me the way to think of this is like a credit card. You have a credit card with a limit, but that limit is the DSRA amount still. And then we better put the uh, uh, LC fees. Uh, and and let's make that half a percent now. For me, it's this is a big one. Oh, oh no, my generic macros is not open. And and uh, oh god, did that sound bad? Okay. Um, 
well, I'm going to take this implement out, maybe. That's just the auto-open thing. Um, and then, uh, huh, if it's funded with cash, we can put the funding date. And the funding date is just going to be a date. And we'll put the COD date. We'll go up to the COD date somewhere up here. And this time I'm going to put a comma minus and I'm always going to use the beginning of the month again. Oh, God, does this drive me nuts when people keep changing the end of the month to the beginning of the month and all that. And up here I have pre-COD periods of one. So this is the this is shift control F3. This is just the month before we uh, uh, before we do the funding. There are other issues that the DSRA brings up, and I uh, uh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and put an interest income rate. Uh, that that's kind of silly. Every and but you know I'll put zero percent at first. Okay. Uh, uh, that would be aggressive to kind of assume that. Now, now the LC fees and the interest income, they can affect the uh, CFADS, and they can cause uh, some horrible circular references. So that's that. I, I, I have a feeling I forgot some uh, uh, parameters for this DSRA, but I... What, whatever. Now, oof. Maybe the six months, maybe perhaps that's why I've got such a kind of extra. Ah, that's much more reasonable. Okay, I might change that. All right, good. Sorry about this introduction. Okay, a little bit sorry. Not totally sorry. Now, the, the first thing you want to do is I, I, I did make a video on this before, but I really did it like crap. And I think people still watch this shit video. Sorry about that saying that, but it, we've got to be a lot more careful uh, with, the, uh, <laughs> with the DSRA. Okay, and now, if I could possibly find my debt balance, I'm going to put it in there. And I've got my my debt balance, my upfront fee, my commitment fee. I suppose I've got my default even here. So I, why don't we just set up a whole section? And of course, it's got to be, I say of course. But this, I don't even feel all that bad about using the word of course. Uh, uh, you know, when I read my uncle's book, <laughs> he kept on saying, it's simple, it's simple. I, it was so, I had no idea what he was talking about. Uh, uh, DSRA. Now, the first thing is, how do we set this up? Of course, this is going to be a brown thing eventually. First thing is, let's put the 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 uh, required debt service, and then let's see. Let's put the debt uh, service for period, which is the interest expense, not the interest during construction. And then we put a, 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 a forward debt service. And for that, we're going to use an offset, some offset. Big deal. I think I, when I first did it, I thought, oh, that's such a big deal. Then we take a, away already funded, which is just the opening balance. Okay, and then after we do that, we have the required uh, DSRA funding. Now, I could also, in this, and I suppose I better do this, I could also, after we funded this, if we've withdrawn some, we have to top it up. Okay, but after, so, so the next step is to put debt, Service. I'm, I'm nervous about this. Reserve balance. Okay, and then we put first we put an opening balance, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then we, we add, and that's what's going to be subtracted from the thing above. And then we add get funded uh, pre-COD. Now, it, then we got to be a tiny bit careful with this one uh, uh, because if we've got two months ahead, we've got to put it all in one month. So that's going to be a little bit tricky. And then we put add or less uh, net funding post COD. Now the funding pre COD goes up here in the sources and uses of funds. So we put DSRA funding. And I, I you know, I, I'm, maybe you think, oh, why didn't you do it more structured? Why aren't you more structured? Uh, I want to be flexible. F is flexible. A, accuracy, fine. S, structured. It's it, There's sometimes a little conflict between those two. DSRA. Okay, now, and now my friend Sahil walked me through this from Dubai. And uh, he, he uh, we kind of came up with a different way to resolve. There will be a circular reference problem, a big one, but we'll see. Now, when we, if we keep going all the way up, this is the horrible part of it. Notice I do not have taxes really correct yet. Ooh, and now my little graph is getting too interfering. What we could have here is we could have less the LC funding. Now, I always thought that LC fees, I always thought LC fees would be part of debt service. Doesn't that make sense? For me, it makes a heck of a lot of sense. Why is the debt service, you, the, the fee you pay to whoever, Barclays in London on a, on a, on a, DSRA considered a different kind of debt service than the debt service you pay out to somebody else. But that's the way people all treat everything. And they treat the, the fees you pay on the, maybe the working capital facility as, as an O&M expense. So it comes out of the O&M expense. And then if we did have a little bit of interest income, we'd put add interest income. Now, these two things drive you completely crazy because they create a circular reference. When we're, when we're, we're sizing the debt and we have more fees, we have less CFADS, CFADS run, drives the size of the debt, debt size drives the, D, the debt service, the debt service drives the DSRA. And, and they, these can be painful ones that slow you down. Interest income, you can ignore most of the time. We all know that. Okay, so I'm, I'm, for some reason, I, I left that all the way at the top. I don't really know why. I think that's kind of silly. I think I'm going to uh, do this. Okay. And uh, so, hmm, okay, okay, uh, here we are. Now, it's also possible that you could have less... Uh, um, <laughs> get me get get a word out, please. Less T S R A used for uh, efficient uh, cash flow, and then we'd have to add. Well, our, our, our this. This thing will will top it up automatically. We'll we'll kind of see how that works, and then we put a closing balance. The key really here is is to get this. Now, what's going to happen here is we're also going to put a a DSRA a funding period flag. And that's going to be, I hate using this word flag. I really hate it, but I've succumbed. I've given up. Switch for me is a better word, but nobody uses it. So that's going to be a true or false. All right. 
And then uh, uh, after that, we'll put DSRA funded. Uh, uh, and I'm going to put pre-COD. Okay. And then we'll kind of have it all done. So this it, it, this video is going to take about as long as that whole video to make the entire model. Now, I, I think I kind of cheated. Okay, so let's first get the debt service for the period. Now, what we do, I'm, oh, God, I'm not going to put in the uh, uh, default. The interest, because whatever, if we defaulted, we, we haven't. We've used up all our DSRA anyway. So I'm going to put the interest expense plus the scheduled repayments, which already have a minimum function in there in case we have a cash sweep. Okay? That's the first step. Not a big deal so far. Okay? There's our DS, there's our debt service, and it goes kind of up and down. And now I'm going to put in our driver column, use the driver column. I'm going to go back and find in the assumption page, down where I just put it, how many periods, not, not months right now, periods. So this, it's a, it's a, a semi-annual model and we have two periods. Uh, so we, uh, for a month, for a year. That's how we've defined it. Maybe there's merchant cash flow. Six months is nothing special. I know it's typically how much, you know, you know how much debt service is. So it typically makes sure you have enough money to pay the next debt service and all that. And, you know, there's this other thing that uh, uh, the very last uh, sculpted period or the very last period, you should use the DSRA to pay that. And then you can have... Uh, 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 if it's funded, and then you can get more debt for the same amount of debt service. So you can kind of do neat little things. And then we put sum. And after that, we put offset. And then is I go slowly. You go up one. And then you put zero because you stay on the same row. And then you put one because you're going to start one forward column. And then you put one because the height of this whole sum offset is going to be one. And then the width is two. Big goddamn, big deal. Big deal. But then, so this looks ahead to, and you can see that this one, so this 188 should be these two. And it is. That's kind of what it does. It looks forward at 12 months, okay? And then, now, we just go downstairs, and we get the opening balance of the DSRA account. Okay. Um, that's that. And finally, the difference between what we need and what we already have, that's the amount. And maybe I'm going to use... Shift Control R, Shift Control E. I'll, I'll even make a little underline for that little thing. Eventually, it goes down to zero. I don't know why there's a little bracket on the zero. That's kind of bothering me. But, you know, when I'm making a video, I can't, if I keep stopping and starting, it always is a pain. So, our A, I've foregone the A in fast. And then we say, okay. Well, if this is the funding needs, this is the, the, the amount that I need to fund pre-COD is this number, and you keep this pre-COD flag in line number four. I've got it on line number three. Oh, it's true. I, this is pre-COD flag. I put true and false for some reason here. Huh. And then... That's the funding pre-COD. And then you put the funding post-COD, which could very well be a negative number, and that's our operation period, which I seem to have adopted the foolish consistency as the 
hobgoblin of a petty mind, and I, I, I changed it. Now, this number, for if we have deficient cash flow, we've got to kind of go down to our cash flow waterfall and figure out where to do that. And I think we need to almost add two more lines, and we got to be a little bit careful. This is making me a little nervous because I haven't done this in, in a long time. And we could put cash after debt service. Now, that could be called CFADS, but it's not. And I, maybe I'll put net cash. So we put, and then if we're good financing, we put net NSEFTs, NSEFTs or something. Okay, because we make up a new word and we subtract that. So we have another subtotal. And the key for all these minimum and maximum things, you know, this DSRA, now I'm kind of changing my opinion. It's not a horrible thing. It's a way to show a whole bunch of things, circular references, uh, flags, using the pre and post and all that. And then we put less the a DSRA used. Now, okay, and that's going to be up here. And, and, and the most we can use, so we, we're only going to use the, we're only going to use this, uh, uh, and then I, I did it wrong. Look at that. It's add. That, that's an addition to cash flow. Excuse me. Okay. And then we put maximum of a minus of this or zero. That's our max first. But we also need a minimum of this. And the minimum is up here uh, when we... Excuse me, I'm going slowly. The minimum is the opening balance because we, we can't use the opening balance. And then this kind of is a little bit of a depend thing. And then this one, we'll just redo this subtotal. And we'll, we'll have this here. Now, the next question is, if you, this is an enormous question. First of all, here, I better be, uh, uh, consistent and put the less uh, DSRALC fees, and we can put add interest income, and I really should be making a balance sheet on this. Uh, 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 now, then... The only question is, where do we put this net funding from the DSRA? If we put this net funding up here, which is very logical, which is a, 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 a very logical, then we get a nightmare circular reference. And, and, and uh, I could certainly argue that if you get to take cash out of your cash accounts because of the DSRA, that's cash that's available to pay the debt service. And if you have to put cash into the DSRA, you could say, well, that is a, a, a reduction in cash available to pay debt service. Now, that you can almost feel the gushiness of the circular reference. Now, I'm going to kind of cheat, and I'm just going to put it here for now, okay? And because of this difficult circular reference, I'm going to say less net DSRA funded, okay? You, I'm not saying this is necessarily correct and, and the exact place you put it depends ex it just, just, just precisely on how you're gonna define this cash flow waterfall, and, and we don't have a balance sheet here. And by the time you start to put all these cash flow sweeps and traps and all that, you should put a cash a balance sheet. But I'm kind of uh, lazy today, and I've got an early morning uh, uh, call. So, so this, here's the key. This number comes from 
the cash flow statement, not the other way around. Okay. All right. So we add it here, which we, means we take it off. And then we can put all of the closing balances, the opening balance, plus the funded DSRA, plus the funded stuff after CO, COD, which might be negative, minus, and you notice I'm using the positive number convention, and if you don't like this, let's not get in a two-hour argument about it, okay? I like it because of the min-max stuff. Now, then we put our flag for when we're going to fund this DSRA, and that's this, this thing that's just right before the COD, shift control three. And let's just make a, a flag where we take this one and we put an equal sign and, and we multiply it by one, okay? And then now, first let me copy all this. Hmm. Come up with a new UDF method. I haven't been moaning about UDF. I'm going to co put copy and pastes in this one. Okay, sorry about just babbling on. All right, now let's so so let's put our our flag in. Okay, and here is the deal. Up here we have the funded DSRA. Now I have been told co quite correctly to always put a sum column in here, and and I totally agree with that and that's why i even on our our little thing I, I even make this automatic column i is the sum column and i put a little border and oh i this is a dangerous thing because i'm just working on implementing this marks to other sheets and i don't want to put a mark to dependent and i want to uh, keep our our uh, column in, in column b so i'm just reminding you with the generic macros to um, uh, use the sum column. I hope I didn't just mess up. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it took me down there. I just was messing around with it. So that's my sum column. So important that we put a little uh, 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 circle around it. Okay. I, I could have put a sum column here. All right, so that now we have a flag, just one single flag. I guess I should have put the sum uh, uh, here, too. You know, that's kind of why you use the ones and zeros instead of uh, using the count if. And then, now I'm going to, the problem here is when we have a 12-month account, we have two pre-COD periods to put it in, but I only want to stick it in one period. So what I'm going to do is kind of do this method where you, you take a sum and convert it over to the driver, and then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to use an if. The reason I'm using an if is, is then it avoids some of the circular reference, and perhaps we can uh, 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 do, do it with... Uh, <laughs> explain it with this. So I put a false, and then I, I we only have one. Okay, no circular reference yet, except for that, that, that other one. Okay, and then now, if I go upstairs, and in the DSRA funding, if I put it right down here, I go to the DSRA funding, uh, which is the, not this one, it's the final one. This is good news. I don't have a circular reference yet. Uh, and I still don't have a circular reference. And uh, um, I could even multiply this by one. Okay, and I could even, I should, I can't believe that I didn't put the sums here. I should be in uh, big trouble for that. Okay, and, and down here, because we have no capitalized interest or no tricky stuff going on about the shareholder loan, we're okay with everything. Uh, uh, 
but we we've cheated with a couple of things we've cheated with the uh, uh, with we've cheated with the circuit with the cache sweep and we've cheated we haven't put in the lc fees so let's work on the lc fees just for a minute uh, uh, the lc approach we still need this kind of balance and i uh y you know th this would be dsra used for this could be dsa used for deficient cash flow or uh, lc used now when we we'll we can put in now a we can leave everything here if this if if we don't have a funded dsra account the good news is the circular reference related to the the whole uh, 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 funding will go away basically because you won't have any draws at all okay and i think perhaps the the best thing to do would be a, to put a a true and a false here just a minute i gotta go to my assumptions remember we had this true and false for the l l and all we can do here is multiply this by this one okay so far so good in fact that got rid of the true and false so if we go and i i know i'm i'm kind of bad about this i tend to waste time with these little um, gimmicks you know and whenever i kind of have a true and a false i'll put one of these these little things in and let's right click on that one and go to format control and go to the scenario analysis and click on this one and uh, i hope i'm keeping an open mind about uh, copy and paste i don't really have an open mind about it but there we go so if if we uh, click on the the button maybe um then we don't have any funding and if we don't have any funding up here uh, uh just a minute we go down to the sources and uses statement and uh this where did this come from well well, well, this DSRA funding went away here, and I better. Where's this? Is the computed level, isn't it? This better come from the all the way downstairs. This better come from the sum of this column, shouldn't it? So let me just use our sum function again. I completely i'm sorry there's one thing i will not give up on i will not give up on this crazy crap i don't have my other the other model i'm working on this crazy stuff of of, of putting these inputs and these drivers in different columns I, I that is something i'm sorry i do not have an open mind about okay so now we have this thing as of course i i'm tempted to redo the generic macro but i won't and uh, uh, we go downstairs. Now, I hope you say, it. wouldn't it be nicer to have this in a class where I direct you, you have to do it yourself, and I direct you, okay? And then we put this thing in, and it worked so fast, shit. <laughs> okay, very good, very good, but we're not quite finished. I think now you might start to kind of, we might have some other problems. Okay, so now we're going to put in the uh, LC fee percent. And let's do it like this, because it's, a, you, you know, I, I should have up here for my LC fee percent, 
I should have over here put a uh, percent p dot a, shouldn't I have? Okay. And we'll take the LC fee percent and we're going to divide it by 12 and multiply it by this. Now, my friend Pascal said, oh, this model was so good because it allowed 360 days versus 365 with a holiday with its whatever. Okay, so what? This kind of thing for me is much more difficult and important. Pascal's a good guy, by the way. Uh, where am I? LC fee. LC fees. Now let's also get our little true false. Maybe there should be a rule that the true false should be in the second drive or some kind of crap like that. And we'll take the opening balance of our account uh, and multiply it by the LC fee percent. Uh, and we only do that because of this adjustment we made to kind of collect the money, we can only do that for the operating period. All right. And there, there we have our LC fees that we would have to pay. All right. Uh, I'm going to rename this file. Well, I should save things. A solar case study with uh, DSRA. Okay. Now, if we put our LC's fees, we have to put them uh, down here, actually. We, we, we should have, uh, this, this balance sheet wouldn't have balanced. We better take away our LC fees for computing the taxes. Uh, now that's going to be a real pain. Because that, that's going to also have a circular reference implication. Okay. And, uh, 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 oh, this is the big cheat. <laughs> I'm going to do that later because that really will be a circular reference, which will be a lot more painful than our, uh, uh, um, excuse me, than our, what I'm about to do now. Okay, so I'm going to put in these LC fees up here. <coughs> and it should create a circular reference. Okay. So uh, let's go down here and get our LC fees. Uh-oh. Ah, well, of course it doesn't create one until we subtract the LC fees. Or maybe it won't create one for a while, and I should have probably saved the file, and I'm about to go crazy if it didn't save the file. And it says circular reference, and it doesn't even show the place. And I made some other macro for, for, the, for this exact kind of situation, and now we're, it's all screwed up. And now, can you imagine, now the only way to do this one is going to be, we're going to have to then, if we don't use this uh, uh, UDF, we're going to have to add a, a line for, uh, uh, we'll call this uh, computed, uh, a CFA DS computed, and then we better have a CFADS uh, fixed. And then we better have a difference. So, I, you know, I, if, if you're turning off the video right now, I totally understand. The only point I'm going to make if you do turn the, the video off is this. Once we start putting this stuff in, it's going to, uh, uh, things are going to get, a lot slower and once we also so we're gonna to have to put this in, in into our circular reference I'll put 
uh, CFADS fixed. No, computed. How about that? C. I've never done it like this, but maybe it's good. CFADS fixed. And and this this sum over here is difference. C uh, C F A D S difference. Now when we let's just take a preview of this. When we assign the macro and press edit and look at this, we're gonna have to do kind of a second one here and, and, and we're gonna have to put them all all together. And then now let let's Let's go back to our, our, our sweep. Explain this. I don't know how this video is working because I made some errors. When I discussed the cash sweep, it is, and I've talked about this before, if you can cheat, and I think this cheating is kind of okay, if you simply put the uh, cash sweep above the DSRA used, just because only one's going to apply if it's negative, the other if it's positive, and uh, I put this one in, so maybe we have a little bit of negative cash flow here, and then we use the DSRA here, and this looks like we're using a ton of it, and we better not use so much that it went to be zero. And our closing balance stayed positive, so we had enough in our DSRA account to kind of fund it on this one. Good. Okay, I'm not going to go into the details much here. Where, where, where was our funding? Uh, less. Here, we, we used the DSRA. Okay, I took a break of two days from this thing. I really hate the DSRAs. Uh, I made a mistake, of course. And it's good that I kind of took a little bit of time to make a mistake. I, in the sources and uses of funds, I simply did not adjust the sum. The sum includes this uh, uh, period here. And that causes a circular reference. And this circular reference... I thought I could kind of get rid of it. I think I was wrong. I thought I could get rid of it by using a little if flag, and that didn't get wrong, uh, uh, get really take care of it. And it's going to, now we're going to have a copy-paste for our CFADS. And, and what I did was just, as usual, copy and... Uh, Pay specialist values down here. Now we still have the circular reference, and what that means we have to do is we have to find where this is a dependent. And I guess I could use the alt md uh, uh, function, but um, I'm going to switch. I'm just going to do it by hand a little bit here, and I have to switch this one to the fixed line instead of the calculated line and that didn't finish it yet and then we have our pro rata funding and I'm going to have to do the same thing here okay I hope you see that it's a little bit logical and then we get rid of our circular reference and I hope I don't have anything else now this t what we're going to have to do is create a, 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 a copy paste for this whole thing okay because we have this big uh, uses of funds over here. So I'm going to have to make a copy paste for this one. And then I'm going to make a copy paste for the CFADS lines. And my friend Hetty, she's, we're working on this really cool thing. I can't wait to kind of introduce this uh, to the world for free as an idiot. But uh, um, we do the same thing for the CFADS, and she told me that these are the two typical lines that are always uh, subject to circular reference in a model. And we're going to have to include them here. And then the next thing, okay, I'm going to do that very, very soon. And the only thing to reason to really stay on the video so far is to, is to see, well... 
what does that do to the speed of the circular reference macro? And then we'll uh, go down, and when we get to the very end after this DSRA, we better have a, a, a little section that says the draws, a ba balance of draws of, of LC funding. I'll, I'll call it funding. That's when we have a really bad downside case, like we have this, you know, th this crisis thing. And we have to use the funding. And we'll put the opening balance, add the draws, and less the repayments. And we'll put a closing balance. And, and if we really obsessive, we should put interest on, uh, on the LC funded, which I might not do. It creates a whole set of new circular uh, references, probably. I don't even know. So when we have this funding period here, we're going to put that in the uh, in our little balance. So those are the two kind of things I'm going to work on, see if we get some more circular references. I didn't put interest income, which would cause a circular reference, and I didn't even do this, but I, I really want to just illustrate what happens here. So if you add, go into your circular reference. Now, here for me, I call this like 101 and 201. Uh, the first time you do a circular a copy paste. It's a really exciting thing. I really think it is. And then you say, ah, I am so cool. I can do a circular reference. So now what I'm going to do is add the difference we get in our, in this one, which means I didn't have to spend all that time making a, a range name for it in this one. So we have all these additional differences. And now we, we cannot just use this in our macro. We cannot just use this kind of range value equal. We can't use the equal. It's fixed equals computed. We can do the same thing. I was totally wrong. OK. And so let's, let's do this one. So we put CFADS. It doesn't matter if if it's it's not magic school. It's not a capital well, sensitive to capital letters. What what would you call that? Case sensitive. <laughs> CFADS computed. And while we're at it. Let's go. I'm sorry about that door opening. I can't help it. You know, I trying to make these videos in a professional manner and some people interrupt me all the time and it really sucks. No wonder you won't you don't like me and you won't take my classes or anything. Okay, funding C equals funding F. Okay. Okay, so let's put this one. I <sighs> this macro with CFADS and now this is a small model still. What's the size of this model? Uh, I should have a macro that, I mean, a function that does that. So now I'm going to change some assumptions. And then I'm going to press circular. And it takes a little while, OK? And let's go to our assumptions page, or our scenario page instead, rather, and change the base case to the downside case. OK, uh, uh, then we go to our financial model, and we need to press this again. And every time you change a case, you kind of have to do that. And this is the big argument, really, for the UDF. The UDF is going to do this in a millisecond. And we, if we have a much, much larger file, if this was a larger file, and if this had multiple debt issues, this whole thing would really start to take a little bit of a time. And, and, and now, and, and we haven't put uh, income taxes. I think I already mentioned that. 
Uh, let's apply the crisis assumptions, and then we have to go through it again. Okay, and let's not apply the crisis assumptions. Then we have to go through our circular reference again, I think. Okay, and it takes a little bit of time. It's still kind of okay. You know, that, that's why, you know, maybe this, this UDF is a little more of a luxury than an a absolute necessity, okay? But you, you will make the, the, the nicer presentations with it and, and all the rest. Okay, and I better title this a, a video, kind of circular references. Now, uh, uh, just a minute, I lost my stupid train of thought. That's what I was looking into months ago. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, I put, I'll tell you what I did. I, I, I really did lost my train of thought, and I'm really getting senile here. But you can still do copy-paste uh, macros when you're senile, okay? And uh, uh, I put this actual taxes. So now this, this, this CFADS has the actual taxes, rather than the, uh, 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 than the fake taxes that I had done. And now, if I again, let me change this back to the base case. Okay, nothing so far, but what I could really do is attach this to the circular model, attach all these to the circular reference model, attach, 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 Ugh. Okay, and then I have to run the circular reference again. One, three, four, five. Ooh, it takes a lot. Ooh, shit, it didn't even... It, it, it's got a problem here. I'm going to have to... Oh, no, I'm going to have to look at that one. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay, oops. Okay, now let... But let, before we look at that one, let, let's... Uh, and what I'll do is just turn the video off and, and, and hopefully fix it. If not, I'll just swear. Now, if we have a funded DSRA, if this is funded, remember we, we could I, I, I fund it with an LC. So if it's true, it's funded. If it's false, it's got the L, LC. So what we have here is we take the opening balance and make that equal the closing balance. That's all fine. The draws from the LC, they just occur, and we find these draws downstairs in the cash flow statements. They come to, that's like always. Uh, we go down and find the DSRA used. Remember, I put this right after the the sweep okay and then now the only thing is we have to figure out how to repay this and this is going to be a good old maximum and minimum now to to do this perhaps let's kind of make luckily we have a little scenario that can do this perhaps i'm going to uh, well let's put the downside case in. and then let's Go over here. Well, then we need to run our circular reference. Again, I sound like an absurd broken record. Uh, and I'm going to, excuse me, oh shit. Guys, oh. more background noise. Can you close the damn door? Oh shit. Oh god. And you, you have to hear all these people. Okay. Where am I? Oh, no, I lost my train of thought again. I'm going to see now. I'm putting it back to the base case. Okay. And I have to always run this circular reference. I hope this is getting irritating for you by now. Okay. And then I'm going to go back. And we're always going to... Uh, Fix the repayments for risk. Oops. Uh, we run the circular. 
we press the fixed debt, excuse me, I don't remember how to take control over this. Okay, so we have our fixed repayments. The good news is there is no little extra crap here. I don't have a, a good audit page, but now I can apply the crisis assumptions. All right, this is our famous big downside, and I hope that I have a default. I do, I do, I have a default. Now this time, instead of the default, what we hopefully can do is we can take it out of the debt service reserve account. So if we go down to our uh, cash flow waterfall, we have this little, and again, it's a min-max. That's all I know. And there it is. There it is. And uh, what happened is, we took it all out, and we still didn't have enough, and we had a default. But, and then, uh, uh, we, we, we left it out down here, and, oh, God, 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 I better put my DSRA funded down here. Now, I, hopefully, that will not cause a circular reference. And I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here. Less net funding after COD. Now, this net funding after COD is all very nice and good. And we better uh, uh, put a minus of a minus. So, so this is kind of like it, it, it gives us a little extra cash flow. No, circular ref no more circular references. That's good. Uh, and 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 just a minute. We 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 have a problem. I'm gonna stop it again. All right. Well, not to worry. Not to worry. Not too upset. We needed a minimum function again. Now I guess. Guess what? I'm going to do. This has taught me a lot. That's why I make these videos. When I, I'm going to have to come up with a DSRA exercise. If you take my class and pay this astronomically high tuition for my class, then you will be able, I'm going to put some of these in yellow, and I'm not going to have you waste time putting all the titles in. You're going to put some of these in yellow, and you're going to learn it, because I guarantee you, nobody, unless they're a complete, sadist would be watching this video and actually trying to do this thing at the same time. I cannot believe you that you would be doing that. So what we have here is a minimum. We make sure our funding isn't, isn't taken out. And then finally, up here, so we take everything out of the DSRA, and then it looks like I have a little bit more of a problem because I've used the DSRA. I shouldn't have anything left in the DSRA. And uh, uh, <laughs> we have another little bitty problem. I guess we have to check these kind of things because this thing, this thing is is the funding uh, times this. And I, I think the better way to do this, this is the the required funding multiplied by our flag. And the better way to do this is to be a, a lot more consistent and put, this is the minimum of, let's re-enter. Again, it must be very difficult to watch this. I can't believe anybody would be still watching this right now. If you are, you can send me an email and I'll give you a little prize. Not worth anything. I don't know what my prize will be. Okay, uh, uh, you just email and said, I really was watching the end of your video. So you, you go up here and you get the total required funding and you multiply that by our famous operating period flag, which when I did my shift control F3, I just didn't use 10 uh, 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 rows. I should have. Okay, so it, it gives you the same thing. Luckily, no circular reference now. And we're not quite finished, not quite finished. This funding now, I think that was worthwhile showing you. 
this funding comes from downstairs. At any time you're going to have a minimum and maximum, that's my new rule. Any time you have a minimum and maximum that needs to look in the cash flow, that number should come from the cash flow. I'm terrified, absolutely terrified of circular reference when I'm pressing these buttons. Okay, and then, so once we have this, we have uh, 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 nothing left, and we have to go all the way here to kind of continue our thing. And finally, we pay it off in that very last year. So, again, some minimum and maximums and being very, very careful with the, uh, 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 with the DSRA account. And I have now, we use the DSRA and it's still, we take the maximum of the opening balance and I should be turning this video off. And we, uh, less, oh, I guess we started with 84. Let's just see what happened. And we used all our 84. That's all we needed is 84. We still had some left in our account. And we used the rest of it here, but we didn't have enough, so we had a default. We had some more defaults, and then we repay the defaults. And that's exactly what you should be doing, kind of, with a, a cash flow waterfall. And then when we're finished with the crisis, we get all out of it. All right. Just one or two more things. One or two more things. Now, uh, 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 let's this when we're repaying this thing. This only occurs. Uh, this thing, the DSRA used. That depends on how much we have in our opening balance. Okay. And your dad. Whoops. Okay. Whatever. Um, the the um, so I, I I needed to add a couple of things and let me explain the line items first. And again, if you take a class, you know, it's I'll try to not make it so torturous, but I'll try to have you learn things. Now, for if you're going to do an LC funding, basically it's like a commitment. You need to know how much you've committed, how much is on your credit card, what's the maximum balance on your credit card, and you're paying an LC fee on this credit card up here. And then, okay, but if you're borrowing on your credit card, you kind of, mm, you don't have to pay the fee. Yeah, no, you don't have to pay the fee anymore. At least I think we'd have to check the, the, the documents. And then you have a remaining balance. And that's kind of what we do, and we see how much is left over, how how much uh, how much have we already borrowed for this, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, you need that because we're going to use that remaining LC balance to see how much we can we we, we blah, blah blah I'm stuttering how much we can borrow. Now the repayment. Oh, the draws. So we have our opening balance. Now, here, let's go down to the draws. Now, I have not done it like this before, but I believe this is the best way to do it. If I'm going to make one method, if we, if we have the account funded, okay? And if the account funded, so I'm just going to multiply this by a zero or one. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same sort of calculation. Let's see if we can remember. It's we're going to take the it, when the cash flow is negative, so we take a maximum and put a minus sign for the negative and put a zero. That's how we're going to take. But the most we can take, <laughs> the most we can take is that I'm so happy because I don't want to get finished with this video in the worst way ever. And we take the maximum of the opening balance, no, the remaining balance thing we just computed. That's why I was so happy that we did this. And then I'm going to uh, uh, multiply this by our other flag, okay? And I'm 
just about to uh, I just remembered what my train of thought was. I have got to, when we're all finished with this, let's look at the effect of the DSRA on the IRR. Let's really do that. And the way, way we're going to do that is, is this is this little button. So I, I put this button up here. It'll change this to this. Okay. Uh, laugh my ass off. Okay. And then I have to, of course, adjust the total. So I'm here, sit, sitting here and I'm doing this. <laughs> oh God, I don't want to teach a class now because it's going to be such a pain to get all this shit in there. Oh my God. Oh, and I, for, I should have put a, a, a plus instead of a minus. And I just got a message. I got my first booking ever for a class, whoever that, I'm, we're going to give you a special award. Okay. And then we, we uh, now when we do the repayment, it's basically going to be the same thing, but this minimum and maximum, I'm going to multiply by our little flag, whether we have an LC or, or a, a cash funded account. So I just turned it off here and we are going to repay it when it's, when, when we have this is positive, so I put a maximum of zero like we do. Okay, but then we're not going to overpay it, so we put a minimum, and we go up to the opening balance. And that, that once you get the hang of this, it's really pretty easy. It's painful. Oh, my God, is, was this painful. No wonder I ate it so much. Whether we're using a LC or a... a, a a fixed account. It's really painful. And then let's multiply this by the fixed amount. Okay. And and then we'll... Uh, okay. And then finally on the dividends, let's subtract our new repayment. Now, there's something that looks a little bit fishy to... Ah, I know what I haven't done yet. So when we have this opening balance... We draw from it. Just a minute. Where are the draws? Oh, crap. Oh, uh, I know. The draws have to come from our new line. Oh, my God. Everything comes from... This is our, our, our basic, basic, basic uh, 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 cash flow waterfall lesson that they come from the cash flow statement, and I took the wrong one. So we, we have this. It comes... The draws up here come from the cash flow statement, and we go blah blah blah. Ah, there we we did it, and it looks like I'm 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 uh, uh, putting all this money on my credit card, and uh, I guess that's okay. I had enough money on my credit card uh, to fund all of this. Okay, is this right? Uh, require funding. Okay. And then I'm going to repay it. And when I repay it, I've got to figure out how to stop repaying it because I don't want to overpay the bank with my credit card. That's, I think, the way you really can think of it, especially if you have an LC. You can think of it like that. And you've got to ask who's going to pay it back. And here, we, we, we paid it back here. And then we have no... Uh, 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 equity cash flow until we're all back. And I think that's about enough. And I hope I have most of these things correct. And I'm going to put this video on my... Ooh, look at my new website. I've got to fix this thing. Uh, uh, I'm going to put this right here. Featured project finance models. Oh, come on. Uh, it's not an 80s website anymore. Somebody said, I'm repeating myself, you know this, if you watch some of my, somebody said it's an 80s website. And I said, I was living in the 80s. And I forgot who was a popular singer in the 80s, but a disco was even popular at the beginning of the 80s. And, and uh, 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 there were no websites in the 80s. I got a, my first email in the, in, in the 90s, which was pretty exciting. And there was no Google till late in the 90s so even if you had a website nobody'd ever find you 
And, and I, so I'm putting it right here on my website. I got off track a little there. Just a minute. And then, oh, my God, is this a long goddamn video. Uh, uh, let, let's put, let's not apply the crisis assumptions. And let's go and just do our structuring and just talk about the difference between having a funded uh, DSRA or a non-funded DSRA. The kind of thing I probably should have started with, but I'm not... <laughs> Uh, 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 I'm not going to. And uh, now, if I push this, just a minute, let me push the merchant percent down a little bit. Okay, good. And I, I can push it back to the base case. Everything should be back. Okay, and now let's see if we just have our base case. Right now, we have a 7.9% IRR, good or bad, whatever. I think it's reasonable, but I better press the circular one again. Oh, one, two, three, oh, four. Oh, a long, long time. Okay, you don't want to press that all the time. And then now let's go down and really check the final thing, the final thing. And I'm going to press this, click off this button, and then I have to redo the... Oh, no. Did I get exactly the same? I, I can't have. I can, it cannot be. Oh, it's taking a little bit long. Oh, oh, there we go. 6.78, if everything worked. I put this off, and that means I'm using a LC, and it's 7.91. So that's good. One more time. And the reason it's got a big impact like this, and I don't have kind of time to really, really go through this. The reason it's got a big impact is because I'm using sculpting and I'm sizing the debt based on a DSCR account. Now, if I would be sizing the debt based on a maximum debt to capital account, a maximum debt to capital uh, which I'm not, you know, because the maximum that we get less debt with the DSCR than with the maximum debt to capital, we get a different impact. The impact from having the LC versus the other one would be less. And I, I th this is this this video is absurdly long, and I'm going to stop there. But I hope that you, as a modeler, you understand this crap better than any of those than any of those people. Anybody who watched this video to the end and can understand this, you're 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 so far ahead of all these fancy people with their their expensive suits and everything else. You just do the work. Okay. Enough.